waters were still and dark as the pirate ship, the sea serpent drifted silently above the sunken wreckage of an ancient vessel, long lost to the depths. The crew had been scavenging for days, diving into the cold, murky waters, searching for treasures buried beneath centuries of decay. But what they found was far more than gold or jewels. It was first spotted by a young sailor named Finch, a smooth black pearl the size of a man's fist, resting in the skeletal hand of a long-dead captain. The pearl glowed faintly in the dim light of the ocean floor, its surface as dark as the night sky, seemingly pulsing with a life of its own. Captain, you should see this, Finch whispered, as he held the pearl up to Captain Lorne. Captain Lorne was a seasoned pirate, his hands calloused from years of steering ships through treacherous waters. He had seen his share of treasures, but nothing like this. His eyes gleamed as he took the pearl from Finch's trembling hands. It was cold to the touch, unnaturally heavy, as though it held the weight of someone more than just stone. I've heard of this, the captain murmured, turning the pearl over in his hand. The black pearl of perdition. They say it grants the power of the gods, but at a price. The crew gathered around, their eyes wide with curiosity and greed. They whispered among themselves, some recalling the legends, how the pearl had once belonged to a pirate king who ruled the seas with an iron fist before disappearing without a trace. Others spoke of dark magic, of sailors who lost their souls to the pearl's curse. But Lorne was not a man easily swayed by superstition. He tightened his grip on the pearl, feeling a strange warmth radiate from it, as though it were calling to him. It's just a story, he said, his voice firm. But power, real power, that's something worth taking a chance on. The crew, though hesitant, followed their captain's lead. They hauled the pearl aboard, its black surface gleaming in the moonlight as they set sail once more. But from the moment it touched the deck, something changed. The air grew colder, the sea more restless, as if the ocean itself knew what they had brought aboard. In the days that followed, the pearl's presence was felt more strongly aboard the sea serpent. It was kept in the captain's quarters, locked away in a small iron chest. But its influence seemed to seep through the wood and metal, reaching every corner of the ship. Captain Lorne found himself drawn to it, spending long hours in his cabin, gazing into its black depths as if it held some hidden secret. Strange things began to happen. The winds that once filled the ship's sails fell silent, leaving them adrift in a sea that had grown unnervingly still. The crew grew restless, their eyes darting to the captain's cabin where they knew the pearl lay. Some swore they heard whispers in the night, voices calling their names, coming from the direction of the chest. It's the pearl, Finch muttered one evening, his voice barely a whisper as the crew gathered on the deck. It's cursed. Shut your mouth, growled Morgan, the ship's first mate. You'll scare the men. But the men were already afraid. Something was wrong, something beyond superstition or sailors' tales. The once clear skies had grown dark and heavy, clouds swirling ominously above them, and yet not a single drop of rain fell. The sea beneath them was still, like a mirror reflecting the stormy sky above, but there was something lurking beneath the surface, something they couldn't see but could feel. Captain Lorne emerged from his cabin, his eyes bloodshot, his face gaunt and drawn. He clutched the pearl in his hand, his fingers wrapped tightly around it. He seemed different, as if the man they had followed for years was slipping away, replaced by something darker, more dangerous. The power, Lorne rasped, holding the pearl aloft. It's real, I can feel it. The sea, it bends to my will. But as he spoke, the crew exchanged uneasy glances. The sea was not bending to his will. It was turning against them. 
the calm was unnatural, and beneath the waves shadows moved, circling the ship like predators, waiting for the right moment to strike. The crew was on edge, their unease growing with each passing hour. And, as night fell, the whispers returned, louder now, insistent, calling them toward the cursed Black Pearl. That night, as the crew tried to sleep, the ship began to groan, as if under some immense, unseen pressure. The sound echoed through the hull, a low, eerie creaking that seemed to come from the very bones of the vessel. Above deck, the once clear sky had turned a deep, swirling grey, and though no wind blew, the ship swayed violently on the still waters. It started with a scream. A shrill, panicked cry pierced the silence, waking the crew from their restless sleep. They rushed from their hammocks, stumbling onto the deck where Finch stood, his eyes wide with terror. Jones, he's gone! Finch shouted, pointing to the empty spot where the sailor had slept. His blankets were twisted and torn, but there was no sign of him. No sign of a struggle, no blood, and just gone. Panic spread like wildfire through the crew. They searched the ship from bow to stern, but Jones had vanished. As the search continued, more unsettling things began to happen. The water in the barrels had turned black. The ropes that once held strong frayed as if chewed by unseen creatures, and the ship's compass spun uselessly in circles. It's the pearl, Finch muttered again, his voice shaking. It's cursed, I knew it. Morgan, the first mate, shot him a glare. Enough of that. We'll find Jones. He's probably hiding. But even Morgan couldn't hide the fear in his eyes. He knew something was wrong. Something far beyond his control. And Captain Lorne, locked away in his quarters with the Black Pearl, had grown more distant, more erratic. By the second day, the sea began to turn against them. The still waters beneath them bubbled and hissed as if something massive moved just below the surface. Shadows danced beneath the ship, and the crew swore they saw glowing eyes staring up from the depths. A thick fog rolled in, enveloping the sea serpent in a suffocating ghostly mist. The crew grew restless, their fear turning to suspicion. Whispers spread among them, murmurs of mutiny, as they debated whether to throw the cursed pearl overboard and rid themselves of its evil once and for all. But Captain Lorne refused. It's mine, he snarled, clutching the pearl so tightly his knuckles turned white. You don't understand the power this holds. We control the seas now. But the sea did not bend to his will. As if enraged by his arrogance, the waters rose, churning into a monstrous storm. Waves crashed against the ship, towering over the mast, and the winds, which had been silent for days, howled like a chorus of tormented souls. The ship groaned and creaked as it was tossed about, the crew desperately trying to hold on as the storm threatened to tear the ship apart. And then, one by one, the crew began to vanish. First, it was Macon, pulled overboard by an unseen force. Then Bellamy disappeared from the crow's nest without a sound. No screams, no struggle. Just empty spaces where men had stood moments before. The curse had taken hold. Captain Lorne, now lost to madness, stood at the helm, the black pearl glowing faintly in his hand. We're not leaving, he muttered to himself, his eyes wide with a dangerous glint. We're not leaving until I have the power. But it was clear to the crew that the Pearl wasn't granting him power. It was devouring him. By the third day, the crew's nerves were shattered. The storm raged on, and the remaining men huddled together below deck, their faces pale and drawn with fear. The whispers had grown louder, more insistent, echoing through the darkened corridors of the ship, calling them to the Pearl. We have to get rid of it, Finch said, his voice shaking. That thing is tearing us apart. 
Morgan nodded, his expression grim. He had always been loyal to Captain Lord, but now even he saw that their only chance of survival was to get rid of the cursed object. We'll throw it overboard, he said, standing up, before it's too late. But as they moved to carry out their plan, the ship suddenly lurched violently, throwing them off balance. Captain Lorne appeared at the top of the stairs, his eyes wild, the black pearl clutched tightly in his hand. You think you can take it from me? Lorne snarled, his voice filled with madness. This is our ticket to rule in the seas. Captain, listen to yourself, Morgan shouted. The pearl's cursed, it's killing us. But Lorne was beyond reason. It's mine, he growled, stepping closer, his grip on the pearl tightening. And no one's taking it from me. Finch and Morgan exchanged a glance, their fear turning to desperation. They knew what they had to do, but the thought of turning on their captain, a man they had followed for years, was unthinkable. But Lorne was no longer the man they knew. He had become something else, something twisted by the Pearl's dark power. The storm outside grew fiercer, the winds howling through the ship as if the sea itself was angry. Waves crashed against the hull, and the ship groaned under the weight of the curse. Now, Morgan shouted, with a burst of energy, the crew rushed toward the captain, trying to wrestle the pearl from his grip. Lorne fought back with a ferocity they hadn't expected, his eyes blazing with a madness that was no longer entirely human. In the struggle, the pearl slipped from Lorne's hand, rolling across the deck toward the edge of the ship. The crew froze, watching as the black pearl teetered on the edge of the railing. But before anyone could act, a massive wave slammed into the ship, knocking them all to the ground. The pearl tipped over the edge, vanishing into the dark, churning waters below. For a moment, silence fell over the ship as the black pearl disappeared into the depths. The crew stood frozen, gasping for breath, their eyes fixed on the dark waters where the cursed object had sunk. The storm raged on, but the whispers that had haunted them for days finally ceased. Captain Lorne, still slumped against the mast, stared blankly at the sea, his face pale and gaunt. Without the pearl in his grasp, it was as if all the life had drained from him. His eyes, once filled with madness, were now empty, hollow. We did it, Finch muttered, his voice barely audible over the wind. It's over. But Morgan wasn't so sure. The sea was still wild, and the ship groaned as it fought against the waves. And though the whispers had stopped, there was still a heavy, unnatural presence lingering in the air, as if the sea itself was deciding their fate. We need to get out of here, Morgan said, his voice tight with urgency. Get to the helm. We have to ride this out. The remaining crew scrambled to their positions, hoisting the tattered sails and gripping the wheel as they tried to steer the sea serpent through the violent storm. The winds howled, the rain pounded down on them, and the waves crashed against the hull, threatening to swallow the ship whole. But as they fought to regain control, they realized something terrifying. The storm wasn't easing. It was growing stronger. Why isn't it stopping? Finch shouted, his hands trembling as he gripped the rigging. We got rid of the pearl. Why won't it stop? Morgan's heart sank as a dark realization dawned on him. The pearl was just a piece of it, he muttered, barely able to hear his own voice over the storm. The curse, it's deeper than that. Suddenly, the ship lurched violently, and Captain Lorne, still too weak to stand, was thrown across the deck. He hit the railing hard, and for a moment it seemed as if he would be thrown overboard. But he held on, his eyes wide with fear. I'm sorry, Lorne whispered, barely audible as he clutched the wooden railing. I, I thought I could control it. 
Morgan rushed to his side, grabbing him by the arm and pulling him back from the edge. It's too late for apologies, Captain, he said grimly. We've got to survive this. But as the ship struggled against the storm, the ocean itself seemed to rise up against them. Dark shapes moved beneath the surface, and the crew caught glimpses of strange, monstrous creatures in the depths, long serpentine bodies with glowing eyes watching them from below. Finch screamed as one of the creatures surfaced, its massive scaled body brushing against the hull. The ship shuddered under its weight, and Morgan felt his stomach drop. We're cursed, Morgan whispered, the realization hitting him like a wave. It's not just the pearl, the sea, it's cursed us. As if in response to his words, the largest wave yet rose from the depths, towering over the ship like a wall of black water. The crew braced themselves, clinging to whatever they could as the wave crashed down, swallowing the sea serpent whole. For a moment, there was nothing but darkness. When the waters finally calmed, the ship was gone, and the sea returned to its eerie stillness. There was no sign of the sea serpent or the crew. The storm had passed, and the black pearl of perdition lay somewhere beneath the waves, waiting for its next victims. 